Hey everyone, it is Emmy Hall with my pal Antoine Goodwin and we are here doing Everyone is a Critic. And Antoine, what are we driving today? Today we're driving a uh, Ford Mustang uh, High Performance 2.3 which is different from the EcoBoost Mustang. It is different from the EcoBoost Mustang. Uh, and we are going to tell you all about it. This EcoBoost uh, 2.3 comes out of the Focus RS. So it's tuned a little bit differently. It's got a few different, like a different turbocharger. So it's putting out 330 horsepower and 32. 300. Is it 332? Yeah. 332 and 350 pound feet of torque compared to the 310 of the regular EcoBoost. So I wanted to start with what Ford says about this, uh, this motor. It says, this is the first EcoBoost engine to be powered by Ford Performance, and it's not afraid to prove it. Whoa. It's the most powerful inline four-cylinder engine in America. America. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, what's nice is that Ford isn't very flowery with all of their um, all of their PR speak. I mean, that's kind of the, the, the flower most flowery that it gets. Um, they do say that it is poised to attack at auto, poised to attack rather at autocross. Um, adds uh, the performance package adds Mustang GT brakes and GT performance package aerodynamics and suspension components to make it the highest performing production four cylinder Mustang ever. Okay, they're really really pushing on this highest performance four cylinder. You know, you know what's interesting about that is that my ears perked up because what I was thinking as I was driving this car around this week is mm -hmm. that this would be a not bad autocross car. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rear wheel drive, reasonable amount of power, mm -hmm. really good handling because I do like the Mustang chassis. Um, I think this would be a great lightweight uh, autocrossing Mustang. Lightweight though? I, I mean it's it lighter Mustang. than the V8. Lightweight? Yeah but it's not when you compare it to... lightweight Mustang. Okay. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, so this one does have the handling package. It's an extra uh, $1,995, and that includes the MagnaRide suspension, a 355 rear end, Corsa 4 tires, and upgraded brakes. So, I mean, I think it's probably a good package to get, but, I mean, how do we feel? Okay, well, let's let's see what our, our viewers think about this whole 2.3. That's the most important thing. Yeah, so uh, I went to the, first of all, the video that we did at the first look at the New York Auto Show last year. Um, and uh, Benjamin Burkhart says, better weight distribution than the GT. Um, Dave Taylor, uh, on our first look at the New York Auto Show says, still better performance than many so-called performance cars. What a great time to be an enthusiast. You know, what's interesting is uh, uh, Ford has kind of, done some interesting things with the Mustang as far mm -hmm. as like offering this turbocharged uh, four cylinder and it's it's sort of allowed the Mustang to fill that niche of uh, inexpensive four cylinder uh, compact sports cars while also still uh, you know meeting the needs of those V8 buyers with the GT. Uh, I think the V6 used to be sort of in a weird no man's uh -huh. land and yeah. this EcoBoost engine uh, just sort of makes the Mustang sort of a better fit for a class that it never fit into before. Well, I, we're going to get to the price in a minute, but what I really liked about um, about Dave's comment was talking about what a time to be an enthusiast because I had, right before I read that, I just read an article that said that there were more people that had purchased EVs than had purchased manual transmissions. Fair so enough. is it a good time to be an enthusiast when, when so many cars don't even come with a manual transmission and they sent us this with the 10-speed automatic? Well, I feel like that's a lot of doom and gloom. But uh, the interesting thing, I think, is that we're at a point now, as far as the enthusiast market, where the cream's risen, risen to the top, right? And sure. all that's left is the cream. You look at what you can buy in this price range around, what is this, around 30 grand, 35 Uh, Let's see. I know the window <coughs> stickers back here. So this one has... I got a price on that. What? Um, but, you know, in the price t in the price range of uh, an EcoBoost Mustang with a bunch of options on it, you're looking at VW GTI, you're looking at Honda Civic Si, you're looking at Hyundai Veloster N. Uh, all really good cars. Uh, you're looking at probably, uh, what is it, uh, Infiniti Q60, uh, which is not super yeah. great, but not bad. Um, yeah, that starts at like 43 grand. Yeah, but I mean, I'd, I'd wager this car is high 30s as equipped. Oh, it's more, I, I actually did some of the breakdown on it, and uh, let me see, this one. Sorry. Uh, so this one is probably right around forty thousand dollars. All right, so in that range, right, yeah. three hundred some odd horsepower. The yeah. the Infinity is going to come with around three hundred horsepower from its uh, yeah from its three liter three liter yeah. Um, you know, but as far as 
the range of what you can get with a 2.3 liter Mustang. I mean, if, if, if you're not getting the high performance chassis and high performance package, that starting price is right around the same point as a Civic Si and a GTI. Yeah, it's right, it right in, in the mid 20s, yeah, mid to high 20s. Excellent uh, competitor in a class that's filled up with things like the Toyota 86. Oh, God, it barely know, makes 200 you, horsepower. Why would you just The Mazda Miata, which gets up to around 30 grand. Uh, for around 171 horsepower, right? right? But why would you get why would you get the base 2.3 liter without the performance package or the handling package? Like in a Mustang. I'll tell you why. Like, why would you do that? Some people like to build it themselves. Well, some people okay, would that, rather put their sure. own wheels, their own sure, suspension, sure, sure. do their own modifications. And as a person who kind of came up in that sort of crowd, I can definitely understand. Yeah, I can get that. Going base. The same reason why people will buy a base uh, Jeep Wrangler because they don't they want to put all of their own. And nobody know, has time for power your power windows and <laughs> weird things that I'm going to take off. Uh, some uh, some, seats. some people had some things to say about the fact that, again, with this smaller engine, um, Stonewalled says my wife's two hundred two thousand and five Rav Four has a two point five liter. I could not get over that. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty funny. Yeah, but but then, does it have like a, a like eleven psi turbo on it? Well, well, right, because then Rob L again, my pal Rob L, he chimes in again with. My friend's farm tractor has a seven liter engine, but only goes up to 35 miles an hour. What's your point? And then Rex Chicane chimes in with a Formula One race car has a 1.6 liter engine. Mind boggling. Yeah, there's now, that, that sort of yeah, the I age mean, old no replacement for displacement. I mean, right, yeah, except there that is you, definitely you can, a replacement for it. it. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't sound as good, certainly, because you and I are both not super into this exhaust I mean, note. Uh, it's, uh, it does get loud. But it doesn't sound like a Mustang. No, it and, doesn't. And uh, I can definitely appreciate that. It sounds like a sport compact car, but, and it should because it's basically a rear-wheel drive Focus RS. Yeah, I mean, when I drove this, I said that it sounded like a fart in a coffee can, and I don't think I'm wrong. <laughs> do you just not like the sound of, like, no. four-cylinder engines? No, 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 I do. I drive a Miata. I mean, come on. That's I drive a turbo Miata. That's the most that's the most four cylinder in that you, you could drive possibly a Mazda get. Mazda Speed Miata. I know it's so good. A fat Miata, basically. Okay. Um. So these are from our first drive video. Uh, Lash one ninety five says should have been renamed or should have been na renamed the Mustang SVO. Oh. What's SVO. You? I mean, that's interesting, right? Because that was based off of the limited edition 2.3 liter from like the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. Got around 175 to 200 horsepower, depending on the year. So, I mean, that's actually an interesting Would have been an interesting naming, name for it. Con con uh, contrivance. Uh, Swagalicious 117, they Great should name. have put in, <laughs> they should have put in the 2.7 liter V6. Would have been a nice middle ground between the I4 and the V8. Oops. And that 2.7 liter makes uh, 325 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. So 25 is less than this, right? Uh, well, I mean, also you got to think about the the Mustang as an international vehicle now. Right? Right, they sell right. it in Europe, they sell it in China, and they sell it in markets where you get taxed on displacement. So keeping the displacement keeping low, displacement down, yeah. slamming more uh, right. more gas into it with that turbocharger is a great way to build power without making the car much more expensive in those markets where it might price itself out by going up just a couple of uh, you know, fractions of a liter. Can you imagine like going to Europe and getting a Mustang for like $50,000? Nope. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Not in the world of fantastic sport wagons. I uh, know, right? It's a great car for this road, I'll tell you that much. All right, um, Docky Bear? I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, $1,195 for destination and delivery charges. Where is this car built, Mars? Probably. <laughs> Probably uh, Mexico. Uh, no, it's not. It's built in. It's built in the states. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, Michael Owen. Biggest question in my mind is: Has Ford up their game in terms of interior fit and finish? Will it squeak and rattle its way over every bump and road imperfection? Um, I haven't really heard any squeaks and rattles. I out mean, of this. aside from you know, this is a pretty gravelly road. Yeah, I mean, there's some hard materials in here, and it's certainly not like a pretty looking cabin. It's yeah. kind of utilitarian, but if I. If you're talking about fit, yes. Yeah. If quality, you're talking about finish, maybe not, because yeah. this uh, dashboard material does look super cheap. Yeah. You don't really want to touch it, because everything that I touch with my fingernail just kind of has that yeah, yeah, hollow yeah. sound. And now this center console tunnel is terrible. Yeah. Oh, but, God. I mean, is it going to rattle? Probably no, not. At least so. not for a couple of years. Um, it's just doesn't really look as good as maybe something that yeah Volkswagen would make um let's see JK J-A-Y K wants to know if it has auto rev matching 
Uh, well, it's an automatic, so oh. yeah. <laughs> I don't think the manual does. I don't think the manual did either. Just, when I drove uh, it. The manual yeah. is just a straight up manual transmission. Yeah. Um, and then we had a, a really interesting conversation here between a couple of people. Um, fitness model, which I really want to know if this person is a real fitness model. Uh, the thing is, I just got my EcoBoost two months ago. In case you didn't notice, here in Southern California, the good gas is $4.79 a gallon for 91 octane. If I get the V8, I wouldn't drive it that much because I drive my EcoBoost a lot. So really bringing up the idea that, I mean, the gas mileage in this is going to be a lot better. I think, let's see, gas mileage. Well, I'm averaging 18.8, uh, and that's gone down today when I've started yeah. hammering it around these roads. But I'm averaged, I think I'm going to end the week out. Uh, around 19 or 20. Yeah, in the manual, you should get 23 miles per gallon combined is what the EPA says. In the V8, you should be getting 18 miles per gallon combined and you're getting 18 right now. I'm getting 18 uh, with this one right here. Uh, right. But you know, again, well, I've been right. driving you're it heavy, like, heavy foot. like a journalist. Heavy I've been foot. in track mode the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, Key Hayes says, uh, or Key Hayes rather says, I'm looking at the upfront costs. If you're conservative with how you get gas, it's not too bad. But yes, I'm aware gas is expensive. Ooh, I gotta look up or I'm gonna get sick. Um, <laughs> so I understand why someone would get the 2.3 liter. I just don't understand why they would pay that much for it. Well, t I mean, I can definitely understand that sentiment. Yeah, uh, I mean, and I think it's it's one of those things where if you're careful with with the uh, with the options. Uh, also, I think they sort of depreciate really quickly. So if you catch it a model year off, yeah, you, you pick up a 2019 around the time the 20s come out, or you know you find yourself a really good CPO 18. Yeah, I mean honestly, so this car with the handling package and the upgraded motor is probably right around 37.4, and a base uh, GT fastback starts at 37.6. So right now I am I'm more than my GT, and you're also. So, I mean, I think that people... It's a base GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's a base GT, but still, you're right in there. You're paying for the motor, right? Fair enough. So, there's a lot of people here that are questioning, like, why would you spend more for this 2.3 liter when you can spend less and still get the still get the V8? And But a lot of people, especially here in California, are making the point that, yeah, but, dude, if you want to, if you need to drive this every day, mm -hmm. it'd be real expensive real fast. Sure. Um Fitness model, again, says, I just tuned my EcoBoost and I'm about 30 horsepower short of a V8, but running the same torque as a V8 and all I have is an intake and a tune cost me $280. I save lots of money and still keep the gas mileage. And then he ends it with, you know my brother from another mother? <laughs> that guy like loves to call people his brother. It's really funny. So yeah, I mean, honestly, when it comes to my cars, I'm not necessarily someone that looks to practicality. You right. know, I mean, I daily drive a Miata, which is very, very unpractical due to its size and the fact that I can't carry anything with it, with it and how much I like to off-road. I mean, like, it's completely impractical, but I love it and I would buy it again. And so, I mean, I feel like that's the same thing with this. If you have to be practical, then yes, absolutely go ahead and get this. But I think you might be happier with the V8. Well, I think that, you know, the, the it's again, it's different strokes for different folks. I mean, when you make a decision about which one you're going to pick up, it's a very personal decision. Right. I feel like they both have their, their pros and cons. Um, I mean, I feel like the V8 would probably respond not just as well to mods, but I mean, the V8 definitely, uh, if you put some time into modding it, like imagine like where you could be in that. Yeah. Um, but I think it just depends on what you're looking for, right? If you're, yeah. if you're just looking for something sporty to drive around and you don't really necessarily care about having uh, big horsepower, I mean, this is definitely going to be a good and peppy car when you want it to be and a lot more efficient when you sure. don't. Um, I guess it really depends uh, on yeah, a number I mean, of things. If I knew that I was going to be going out to drag nights, everyone's at drag nights, <laughs> drag, drag racing nights. nights. That's a completely different <laughs> thing in the totally Bay Totally different thing in San Francisco. Uh, you know, then I would definitely want to go with the V8. However... You're clear this way if you go really fast. What? <laughs> yeah, listen to that. I just, it's. It's not bad. It's not bad. It just, just doesn't sound like I a wanted. Mustang. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It weirdly, weirdly sounds like from the inside like a Subaru. I know from the oh, outside. Yeah, it actually kind of does. Yeah. Uh, it's a completely different exhaust note from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's you know. It's why whenever someone asks me, like, hey, what kind of car should I get? Like, what should I do? You know, which options are important to me? It's the it's first thing that you get back from me is going to be a lot more questions. Right. Because I want to know what are you going to do with the car? What are you right. looking for? Right. What sort of things do you like? Um, and, I mean, it, it, you know, some cars are objectively 
objective. Well, a few cars are objectively better uh, than other things because it's just like you know, I'm, I, what I'm looking for, you know, right, something right, that has like a right. really firm suspension is maybe not what somebody else is looking right. for in that that class. So I have to ask those questions of yeah. people, uh, which you know, sort of interestingly makes. Uh, filming reviews and writing reviews uh, <laughs> difficult because you kind of do have to come down on covering all your bases and right. basically uh, describing the car from a holistic standpoint. But then when it comes down to brass tacks, should you buy this car? Uh, I got a lot more questions for you than you probably do for me. Well, I mean, when it comes down to that, I'm always like, should I buy this car? Does the car make you smile? When you get out of the car, do you turn around to look at it again? If so, then you should buy it. And if you don't, then don't bother because life is too short to buy something that doesn't make you happy. And if it's if a 2.3 liter base, 2.3 liter EcoBoost Mustang makes you happy, then you should do it. You should. Or just Absolutely. save up for a GT500. Yeah, is, just save up for a 760 horsepower GT500, which you will wrap around a tree so fast. All right, GT350. Yeah, Objectively, GT350R. the best Mustang yes, of all time. Yes, I totally agree. I love that GT, GT350R. Um, while we're talking about other Mustangs, though, can we just talk? I would love to talk about the Mach E for a minute because sure. people have opinions. People have opinions. People have opinions. So I have opinions. On our first uh, first look video, uh, Leif Clausen said, It's a great idea. They should have just called it the Mach E. They should have just called it the Mach E. They should have just called it the Mach E. Putting then, Mustang in there. I don't get it. I mean, it, it's Are on they some level. It was a publicity stunt, right? Well, I mean, it did get a lot of people talking about it, whether it hashtag not my Mustang. I mean, you can't, right. you can't pay for that sort of publicity. But are they trying to make Mustang like a sub-brand, like how SRT used to kind of be its own sub-brand, and then they brought it back in? Like, are we now going to see different versions of the Mustang? I'm, I think that sort of comes back to the whole idea of the Mustang being the global car. I mean, the brand has value, but in different parts of the world, uh, you know, I'm imagining the Chinese market is going to be a big one for an electric vehicle. Sure. Uh, that's sort of like there's the equity of the name Mustang of the badge Mustang, but they haven't really necessarily had as much sort of contact with Mustang. And, right. you know, you, uh, it's interesting you find things that we take for granted as being like huge parts of our culture, like Star Wars. Right. You go to different markets and like in the Chinese market, they don't know anything about it. How can so they not have know to, anything about Star Wars? They had to Star give people Wars. primers on Star Wars on their way into the movie theater because <laughs> they don't know anything about it. And I think there's a similar thing where right, it's just, right. if you, you, you can get a fresh start with the Mustang brand in those areas but it's not a full-on fresh start right. because people still know what a mustang is even if it's not in their blood well tony s had a really good idea that would piss off the tesla fanboys while still keeping with what was that this is a really modded out veloster turbo oh okay um <coughs> tony s's idea was to, to kind of piss off the the uh, tesla fanboys while also staying true to ford's route roots calling it uh going from the model t and calling the mustang Mach-E the model e I mean, come on, that's a really good idea, right? Uh, I mean, I've, Elon would be so upset. I'm pretty sure the whole reason that the Model 3 isn't the Model E is because doesn't Ford own Model E? Or someone owns I Model E, right? I don't, uh, I don't know. That's the whole reason the Model 3 isn't the Model E. It's because Elon wanted that sexy, S-E-X-Y. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, but he couldn't get Model E, and so he did Model so 3. Maybe, so maybe somebody else owns it. Because he's a lead hacker. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Ford that owns it, but someone yeah. owns it, for sure. All right. Um, and then white male privilege brought up a really funny thing. The autopilot on the Maki is called Maki Auto. Maki Auto. Get it? Like Maki okay. Auto. Love it. See, I know white male privilege is definitely all into the dad jokes. <laughs> uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean honestly, I don't know. There, there are. Uh, let me see. I don't even know what I'm saying here. Let me, let me <laughs> figure it out. Let me figure it out because I feel. Honestly, a little sick to my stomach after trying to read this and not seeing any of the road. I'll be honest, know. I picked that road for revenge. Why revenge? Because every week I have to read and you drive like a mad woman. <laughs> so, uh, I will mission accomplished. I'll give you a little taste of your own medicine. I am not going to be able to eat lunch now. I do feel a little, uh, a little queasy in my tum tum. All right, well, that was Everyone is a Critic. If you would like to see uh, uh, your comment read by one of us here on a video, then you have to comment. Comment on all our YouTube stuff, you guys. We read them, we love them, we enjoy them, but of course, only the nice ones. Um, Antoine, what car are we gonna have next, you know? Uh, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what we're gonna have yeah. next, uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, that's all we got for today. Bye, you guys.